I think the season thus far has, has gone very well. We're 7-1 in dual meets with our only loss coming to Michigan, the University of Michigan, who they were ranked fifth in the country at the time when we competed against them. And a couple bouts go one way or the other, and the match comes down to heavyweight, uh, which is pretty impressive for us. So at the time, we weren't nationally ranked. Now, now we are nationally ranked 25th by Win Magazine. Uh, so it was a big step for our program. Um, to, to just to battle with those guys and, and keep it as close as we did. Uh, our big wins on the season are Lehigh University, uh, which is a national powerhouse. Their coach is a former Olympic coach. So anytime you can get, beat a team with that much tradition, I think they have over 100 All-Americans in the history of the program. It's always a big deal. And we beat uh, Purdue and Michigan State on the same day, which was monumental for our program. It was the first time we've ever defeated a Big Ten team, let alone two Big Ten teams, in one day. Wrestling in the John Paul Jones Arena was one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of in any athletics. When I was here, we wrestled in Mem Gym. Obviously, we still wrestle the majority of our matches in Memorial Gymnasium, which is a great venue. We're very excited about wrestling there, but nothing compares to the John Paul Jones Arena. And I told my guys they better appreciate what they just went through, because hopefully they'll remember it from years to come. We started with Ross Jatomer at 125 pounds, who um, wrestled this young man a week earlier at the Southern Scuffle from Old Dominion, Nicholson I believe is his name, and, and lost to him for third and fourth at the Southern Scuffle. So we were hoping to get some revenge at that weight. It didn't happen. He ended up wrestling a great bout, but still lost close to a very tough kid. Nicholson is nationally ranked. At 133 pounds, we had Anthony Burke. Uh, Anthony Burke is was filling in for the injured Eric Albright and did very well took taking second in the tournament, but he got, he got controlled in the finals pretty handily by a very tough wrestler from Old Dominion. At 149 pounds, we had freshman, uh, true, true first year, Sean Harris wrestling. He's from St. Ed's, Ohio. He was a huge recruit from my, my first recruiting class here and uh, wrestled a, a guy who was ranked 11th in the country and it looked like a, a fourth year 11th in the country guy wrestling a freshman. He definitely, he really took it to us and that was, a, I think it was a, a positive as it's a very good learning experience for a young wrestler to go through that. I went through it. Uh, I think my coaching staff, we've all been there so I think, I hopefully that'll help him. For a guy like Sean Harris, a true freshman stepping in and wrestling, a guy that high ranked, what it does is it gives him a sense of what to expect the rest of his college career. It gives him a, it's a very valuable learning experience. Okay, I'm going to go against this guy who's he's top ten, right around the top ten in the country. He goes hard. He's physically developed. He's technically developed. How do I stand up against this guy, and, and what do I need to work on to get to this guy's level? How do I work when I get back in the room all week after a loss like that? How do I make those improvements to so the next time when I face him, it's a different story. At 157 pounds, that one was an easy, easy one for us to coach because it's two of our own guys wrestling each other. So I guess the positive of that is we have a lot of depth now, and I'm very excited about the, the, the quality of the depth we have in the lineup. That being said, only one guy can win. So here's two guys you work with day in and day out facing each other. It's an almost impossible to coach that type of situation. Who do you root for? You, know, you want to be very careful. We just sit back and make sure the guys are wrestling hard and make sure that they're safe, and, and Drew DePascal came out on top in that one, who's, who's an older wrestler. Michael Chairs uh, has been an, an unbelievable story for us the entire season. I believe his season record is 22 and four as a first year, as a true freshman. That's amazing. He's not even physically mature yet. He's eight, he just turned 18 years old. He's a young 18. Uh, he's wrestling guys that are full grown men. I mean, these guys, some of these guys' body types when he competes against them, it's just it's, ama it's amazing the physical difference. And yet he still finds a way to. He's so competitive. He's so competitive that he finds a way to beat these guys. Brent Jones has been another great story for us. You know, er everything we say in coaching is okay. It's not the end of the world. And mentally, get over the hump. Wrestling is a very mentally demanding sport. Um, and that's what Brent Jones did. He got back on the horse. He got himself together mentally and, and has been wrestling phenomenal. He took second at the Southern Scuffle, which is a nationally renowned tournament, uh, beating the number seventh ranked guy in the country from Hofstra along the way, Joe Ravelli, uh, returning All-American. So that was an amazing win for, for, for Brent Jones. And then he carried into this tournament the momentum and he won the tournament. What's the most exciting for me is the passion in the, in the kids' eyes when they walk into the wrestling room. It's pretty exciting for me. I see how excited they are to just be in there. And wrestling's a grueling, grinding sport. It's not fun. I always joke around with my guys, training isn't fun, winning is fun. But these guys actually enjoy the training part. They really enjoy the wrestling, the hardcore wrestling side of it, and that's what's exciting for us. It's going to be a pretty exciting time in the years to come.